Hi everybody and welcome to my channel Hobbit BB. Earlier I posted an overview of asthma which is a common condition and today this video of mine is a detailed video about this condition. Okay. Asthma is a condition in which your air ways narrow and swell and may produce extra mucus. This can make breathing difficult and trigger coughing. A whistling sound which is wheezing when you breathe out and shortness of breath. For some people asthma is a minor nuisance for others it can be a major problem that interferes with daily activities and may lead to a life-threatening asthma attack asthma cannot be cured but its symptoms can be controlled because asthma often changes over time it's important that you work with your doctor to track your signs and symptoms and adjust your treatment as needed now i will tell you the symptoms of this uh, condition asthma symptoms vary from person to person you may have infrequent asthma attacks or have symptoms only at certain times such as when exercising or have symptoms all the time. Asthma signs and symptoms include shortness of breath, chest tightness or pain, wheezing after exhaling which is a common sign of asthma in children, trouble sleeping caused by shortness of breath, coughing or wheezing, coughing or wheezing attacks that are worsened by a respiratory virus such as a cold or the flu. Signs that your asthma is probably worsening include asthma signs and symptoms that are more frequent and bothersome, increasing difficulty in breathing as measured with a device used to check how well your lungs are working, which is peak flow meter. This needs to uh, no, this, uh, also if if the need to use a quick relief inhaler is more often than it means that your asthma is getting severe. For some people, asthma signs and symptoms flare up in certain situations. Uh, such as exercise induced asthma which may be worse when the air is cold and dry, occupational asthma which is triggered by workplace irritants such as chemical fumes, gases or dust, uh, allergy induced asthma which is also a common condition. This is triggered by airborne substances such as pollen, mold spores, cockroach waste or particles of skin and dried saliva shed by pets which is, which is known as pet tender. You should seek emergency treatment if severe asthma attacks uh, uh, are a problem because this uh, severe asthma attacks can be life threatening. You should work with your doctor to determine what to do when your signs and symptoms worsen and when you need emergency treatment. Signs of an asthma emergency include rapid worsening of shortness of breath or wheezing, no improvement even after using a quick relief inhaler, shortness of breath when you are doing minimal physical activity. So, if, if these kind of situations arise, then it means you are having emergency, uh, uh, having emergency, and that is acute severe asthma. So you should seek immediate medical care. Okay. You should see your doctor if you think you have asthma. If you have frequent coughing or wheezing that lasts more than a few days, or any other sign or symptom of asthma, you should see your doctor. Treating asthma early may prevent long-term lung damage and help keep the condition from getting worse over time. To monitor your asthma after diagnosis, uh, this is also important. If you know your you have asthma, work with your doctor to keep it under control. Good long-term control helps you feel better from day to day and can prevent a life-threatening asthma attack. Also, you should see your doctor if your asthma symptoms get worse. Contact your doctor right away if your medication does not seem to ease your symptom or if you need to use your quick relief inhaler more often. Do not take more medication than prescribed without consulting your doctor first. Overusing asthma medication can cause side effects and may make your asthma worse. To re also, you should see your, the help of your doctor to review your treatment. Asthma often changes over time. Meet with your doctor regularly to discuss your symptoms and make any needed uh, treatment adjustment. Okay, now I should tell you the causes. It is not clear why some people get asthma and others do not, but it's probably due to a combination of environmental and inherited uh, factors. Okay, uh, here are some asthma triggers which uh, you must know. Exposure to various irritants and substances that trigger allergies uh, can trigger signs and symptoms of asthma. Asthma triggers are different from person to person and can include airborne allergens such as pollen, dust, mites, mold spores, pet dander, or particles of uh, cockroach waste. Respiratory infections such as the common cold, physical activity, cold air, air pollutants and irritants such as smoke. I mean these are the asthma triggers which I am telling you, so you should keep a note, okay? Also certain medication including beta blockers, such, uh, beta blockers 
aspirin and non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and naproxen sodium can be a triggering factor okay strong emotion and stress can also trigger asthma uh, sulfites and preservatives added to some types of food and beverages including shrimp dried food processed potatoes beer and wine can also be triggering factors uh, also there is a condition known as gerd i mean gastroesophageal reflux disease uh, in which stomach acid backs up into your throat that can also trigger asthma now i should tell you the risk factors a number of factors are thought to increase your chances of developing asthma these include having a blood relative with asthma such as a parent or sibling having another allergic condition such as atopic dermatitis which causes red itchy skin or hay fever which causes a runny nose congestion and itchy eyes being overweight being a smoker exposure to second hand smoke exposure to exhaust fumes or other types of pollution exposure to occupational triggers such as chemical used in farming hair dressing and manufacturing so these were the risk factors now i shall tell you the complications asthma complications include signs and symptoms that interfere with sleep work and other activities sick days from work or alcohol during uh, sick days from work or school during asthma flare ups a permanent narrowing of the tubes that carry air to and from your lungs which is uh, which are known as bronchial tubes which affects how well you can breathe okay emergency room visits and hospitalization for severe asthma attacks are also common complications side effects from long term use of some medication used to stabilize severe asthma can also be a complication proper treatment makes a big difference in preventing both short term and long term complications caused by asthma okay now i should tell you the pre- uh, preventive measures while there is no way to prevent asthma you and your doctor can design a step by step plan for living with your condition and preventing asthma attacks you should follow your asthma action plan with your doctor and healthcare team write a detailed plan for taking medication and managing an asthma attack then be sure to follow your plan asthma is an ongoing condition that needs regular monitoring and treatment taking control of your treatment can make you feel more in control of your life you should get vaccinated for for influenza and pneumonia staying current with your vaccination can prevent flu and pneumonia from triggering asthma flare ups okay you should also identify and avoid asthma triggers a number of outdoors allergens and irritants ranging from pollen and mold to cold uh, cold air and air pollution can trigger asthma attacks find out what causes or worsen your asthma and take steps to avoid these triggers you should also monitor your breathing you may learn to recognize warning signs of an impending attack such as slight coughing wheezing or shortness of breath but because your lung function may decrease before you notice any signs or symptoms regularly measure and record your peak air flow with a home peak flow meter a peak flow meter measures how hard you can breathe out your doctor can show you how to monitor your peak flow at home also identify and treat attacks early if you act quickly you are less likely to have a severe attack you also won't need as much medication to control your symptoms when your peak flow measurement decreases and alerts you to an oncoming attack take your medication as instructed also immediately stop any activity that may have triggered the attack if your symptoms do not improve get medical help as directed in your action plan also you should take your medication as prescribed do not change your medication without first talking to your doctor even if your asthma seems to be improving it's a good idea to bring your medication with you to each doctor with that you your doctor can make sure you are using your medication correctly and taking the right dose also you should pay attention to increasing the quick relief inhaler use if you find yourself lying on your quick relief inhaler inhaler such as albuterol your asthma is not under control see your doctor about adjusting your adjusting your treatment so you should keep these preventive measures which i have just told you in mind okay now let me tell you the uh, diagnosis okay well when the patient come to us we uh, we perform a physical uh, we, of, of course first we will take a detailed history and then we perform a physical exam to rule out other possible conditions such as respiratory infection or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease cobt which is a sort of similar disease to asthma uh, but the treatment is uh, different okay also uh, we ask you question about your signs and symptom and about any other health problems okay and uh, now i should tell you the test which to measure lung function you may be given lung function test uh, lung function test to d- determine m- how much air moves in and out as you breathe these tests include spirometry 
This test estimates the narrowing of your bronchial tube by checking how much air you can exhale after a deep breath and how fast you can breathe out. Peak flow. A peak flow meter is a simple device that measures how hard you can breathe out. Lower than usual peak flow readings are a sign that your lungs may not be working as well and that your asthma may be getting worse. Your doctor will give you instruction on how to track and deal with low peak flow readings. Lung function tests often are done before and after taking a medication to open your airway and that is called a bronchodilator such as albuterol. If your lung function uh, improves with the use of bronchodilator, it is likely that you have asthma. Okay. Also, we, we may recommend some additional tests uh, such as methacholine challenge test. This is, uh, methacholine is a uh, known asthma trigger. When inhaled, it will cause your airways to narrow slightly. If you react to the methacholine, you likely have asthma. This test may be used even if your initial lung function test is normal. Okay. Imaging test. A chest X-ray can help identify any structural abnormalities or diseases such as infection that can cause or aggravate breathing problem. Okay. Uh, allergic testing. Allergy testing. Allergy test can be performed by a skin test or blood test. They tell you if you are allergic to pets, dust, mold, or pollen. If allergy triggers are identified, uh, we may recommend allergy shots. Okay. Uh, another test is nitrous oxide test. This test measures the amount of the gas nitrous oxide in your breath. When your airways are inflamed, a sign which is a sign of asthma, you may have higher than normal nitrous oxide levels. This test is not widely available. Sputum eosinophils. This test looks for certain white blood cells which are eosinophils in the mixture of saliva and mucus which is known as sputum, um, um, which you discharge during coughing. Eosinophils are present when symptoms develop and become visible when stained with a rose-colored dye. Also, we may uh, order provocative testing for exercise and cold induced asthma. In these tests, we measure your airway obstruction before and after you perform vigorous physical activity or uh, take several breaths of cold air. Okay. So these were the tests. Now I should tell you the classification of asthma. Well, basically, it's uh, our for us for um, I mean we classify asthma. Uh, according to the needs of the treatment okay but you must have some sort of ideas that which kind of asthma you have okay i mean according to this classification so that you are well aware of your treatment option okay uh, to classify your asthma severity we we consider how often you have signs and symptoms and have how severe they are we also consider the results of your physical exam and diagnostic test determining your asthma uh, severity helps us to choose the best treatment. Asthma severity often changes over time requiring treatment adjustment. Uh, so uh, now I should tell you the four general categories of uh, asthma. Okay. The first category is known as mild intermittent. In this mild symptom up to two days a week and up to two nights a month. Okay. And the next is mild persistent. Uh, in this category symptom more than twice a week but no more than once in a single day. Okay. Uh, then the next is moderate persistent in this symptoms once a day and more than one night a week. Severe persistent is that symptom throughout the day on most days and frequently at night. Okay. So now I should tell you the treatment. Preventive, uh, prevention and long term control are key to stopping asthma attack before they start. Treatment usually involves learning to recognize your triggers, taking steps to avoid triggers and tracking your breathing to make sure your medications are keeping symptoms under control. In case of an asthma flare-up, you may need to use a quick relief inhaler. Now I should tell you the medication. The right medication for you depends on a number of things, your age, symptom, asthma triggers and what works best to keep your asthma under control. Preventive long-term control medication reduces the swelling uh, in your airway that lead to symptoms. Quick relief uh, inhalers which are bronchodilators quickly open swollen airways that are limiting your breathing. In some cases allergy medication are uh, also necessary. First I should tell you the long term asthma control medication. Generally these are taken daily. These are the cornerstone, cornerstone of asthma treatment. These medications keep asthma under control on a day to day basis and make it less likely you will have an asthma attack. Types of long term control medication include uh, inhaled corticosteroids. These medications include fluticasone propionate, okay, uh, which comes with the name of Flovent HFA, okay, 
Brudiso uh, night, uh, which comes with the name of palmicotinite, while well, I have been uh, openly prescribing this, okay, and some others, okay. You may need to use these medications for several days to week before they reach their maximum benefit. Unlike oral corticosteroids, inhaled corticosteroids have a relatively low risk of serious side effects. So that's why I, we prescribe this uh, inhaled corticosteroid because of low risk of side effects. Okay. Then the next category of medicine is leukotriene modifiers. These oral medications include multiclicos, which, which comes with the name of singular. Okay. These help relieve asthma symptoms. Multiclicos has been linked to psychological reactions such as agitation, aggression, hallucination, depression, and suicidal thinking. Seek medical advice right away if you experience any of these reactions. Okay. Then the next the treatment is combination inhalers. These medications such as flu fluticasone, salmitrol, uh, okay, which comes with the name of Adver, HFA, okay, and Budisonide for Mitrol, uh, which comes with the uh, name of Symbicode. I have been prescribing the Symbicode uh, to my patient, okay, and some others contain a long term, long acting beta agonist along with a corticosteroid, okay. The next medicine, which is Theophylline, which is not often used, but I should tell you. This is a daily pill that helps to keep the airway open by relaxing the muscle around the airways. It is not used as often as other asthma medication and requires because it requires regular blood test. Okay. So these were the long term medication which I told you. And now I should tell you the quick relief which are rescue medication. These are used as needed for rapid short term symptom relief during an asthma attack. They may, they may also be used before exercise if, if uh, your doctor recommends it. Types of quick relief medication include short acting beta agonists. These inhaled quick relief bronchodilator act within minutes to rapidly ease symptoms during an asthma attack. These include a very famous albitrol okay, and ventolin inhaler. Okay. Short acting beta agonists can be taken using a portable handheld inhaler or a nebulizer, which is a machine that converts asthma medication to a fine mist. They are inhaled through a face mask or mouthpiece. Then, the, then, then comes the anticholinergic agents like other bronchodilator eprotropium, which come with the name of atrovent HFA, uh, okay, act quickly to immediately relax your airways, making it easier to breathe. They are mostly used for emphysema and chronic bronchitis, but can be used to treat asthma. Okay. The next category of medicine is oral and intravenous corticosteroids. These medications, which include prednisolone uh, uh, and uh, other, other like uh, depot metrol injection, they, they relieve air inflammation caused by severe asthma. They can cause serious side effects when used long term. So these drugs are used only on a short term basis to treat severe asthma symptom. If you have an asthma flare up, a quick relief inhaler can ease your symptom right away. But you should not need to use your quick relief inhaler very often if your long term control medications are working properly. Keep a record of how many puffs you. Uh, use each week if you need to use your quick relief inhaler more often than your doctor recommends see your doctor you probably need to adjust your long-term control medication also we, as i told you before allergy medications may help if your asthma is triggered or worsened by allergies these include allergy shots that is immunotherapy over time allergy shots gradually reduce your immune system reaction to specific allergen you generally receive shots once a week for a few months then once a month for a period of three to five years then there is a new category of drugs that is biologi biologics. These medications which include omelizumab that come with the name of Zolier and some other medicine uh, are specifically for people with uh, people who have severe asthma. Okay. Then there is a newer treatment uh, option that is known as bronchial thermoplasty. This treatment is used for severe asthma that does not improve with inhaled corticosteroid or other long-term asthma medication. It is not widely available. Uh, nor it is right for everyone. During bronchial thermoplasty, your doctor heats the inside of the airways in the lung with an electrode. The heat reduces the smooth muscle inside the airways. This limits the ability of the airway to tighten, making breathing easier and possibly reducing asthma attack. This therapy is generally done over three outpatient visits. Okay. Uh, uh, you should also uh, know that your treatment should be flexible and based on changes in your symptom. Your doctor should ask about your symptom at each visit. Based on your signs and symptoms, your doctor can adjust your treatment accordingly. For example, if your asthma is well controlled, your doctor may prescribe less medication. If your asthma is not uh, well controlled or are getting worse, your doctor may increase your medication and recommend more frequent visits. For asthma action plan, you should work with your doctor to, to create an asthma action plan that 
outlined in writing when to take certain medication or when to increase or decrease the dose of your medication based on your symptom. Also include a list of your triggers and the steps you need to take to avoid them. Your doctor may also recommend take, tracking your asthma symptom or using a peak um, or using a peak flow meter on a regular basis to monitor how well your treatment is controlling your asthma. Okay. So these were the treatment uh, option. Now I should tell you lifestyle, some lifestyle and home remedies which you should be also uh, uh, noting carefully. Okay. Although many people with asthma rely on medication to prevent and relieve symptoms, you can do several things on your own to maintain your health and lessen the possibility of asthma attacks. Uh, first is that you should avoid your triggers. Taking steps to reduce your exposure to asthma triggers is a key part of asthma control. To reduce your exposure, you should use your air conditioner. Air conditioner, uh, air conditioner reduces the amount of airborne pollen from trees grasses and weeds that find its way indoors. Air condition also lowers indoor humidity and can reduce your exposure to dust mites. If you do not have air condition, try to keep your windows closed during pollen season. Okay. Also, uh, you should decontaminate your decor. Minimize dust that may worsen nighttime symptoms by re replacing certain items in your bedroom. For example, in case pillows, mattresses and box springs in dust proof covers. Avoid using and down filled pillows and blankets throughout the uh, house. Remove carpeting and install hardwood or linoleum flooring. Use washable curtains and blinds. Minimal uh, maintain optimal humidity. If you live in a damp climate, talk to your doctor about using a, a dehumidifier. Also, you should prevent mold spores. Clean damp areas in the bathroom, kitchen, and around the house to keep mold spores from developing. Get rid of moldy leaves or damp, uh, damp firewood in the yard. Okay. Also, you should reduce your pet dander. If you are allergic to dander, avoid pets with fur or feathers. Having pets regularly bathed or groomed may also reduce the amount of dander in your surroundings. Clean regularly. Clean your home at least uh, once a week. If you are likely to stir up dust, wear a mask or have someone else do the cleaning. Wash your bedding regularly. Cover your nose and mouth if it is cold out. If your asthma is worsened by cold or dry air, wearing a face mask may help. Also, you should stay healthy. Take care of yourself, uh, which uh, can help uh, keep your symptoms under control. This, uh, these measures include, you should get regular exercise. Having asthma does not mean you have to be less active. Treatment can prevent asthma, uh, asthma attacks and control symptoms during activity. A regular exercise can strengthen your heart and lung, which helps relieve asthma symptoms. If you exercise in cold temperature, wear a face mask to warm the air you breathe. Also, you should maintain a healthy weight. Being overweight can worsen asthma uh, symptoms and it puts you at higher risk of other health problems. You should also control heartburn and gastroesophageal reflex disease, that is GRD. It is possible that the acid reflex that causes heartburn may damage lung airways and worsen asthma symptoms. If you have frequent or constant heartburn, talk to your doctor about treatment option. You may need treatment for GRD, GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease, before your treatments and before your asthma symptoms improve. Okay. So this was my video about asthma. I hope you uh, you like this and. Uh, uh, if you are suffering from asthma or any other illness, please do not forget to uh, comment about your illness and I'll try to post a video about your illness and if I do not find a time, I'll try to reply to your comment as soon as possible because I reply to every comment on my channel, okay? And uh, uh, till now, if you haven't subscribed my channel, please subscribe it and click the bell icon so that all up upcoming videos are delivered to your inbox straight away. And also do not uh, forget to give a thumbs up to this video because this will give me encouragement to produce more useful videos such as this one, okay? And also because this channel of mine, which is known as Hope the PP, is basically meant to uh, help humanity across the world. So please share my videos with others so that you can also be part of and this create initiative. You can share this video through social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in next video. Bye for now.